Hello and welcome back to Littlest Petcast. I'm your host, James, and today we are going over the episode In the Loop. Uh, uh, and we begin in a flashback to Russell's first day at Littlest Pet Shop. And apparently he was the second to last of the regulars to come in, with the last obviously being Penny Ling. We've already been over this. But everyone else is here, and it's Russell's first day. And this is like the most we've seen out of a flashback that is flashed back to this point. Like, we've seen bits and pieces, but like nothing substantial. And, I don't know, there's just some things about it that are, are off from like my understanding. This is why we need strict timelines. And, like, I, I get it. Like, you, you don't need a timeline in everything. That's that's fairly obvious. But, like, I don't know. This one seems to warrant it somehow. Like, I don't know. It's weird. Or at least confirm the ages of the characters. Like, e even... Even... If you want to have this in a universe where animals age at the same rate as humans, like, just say that. Just say that, and I'll be fine with it. Like, I don't, I don't need this, like, guessing game when it comes to, you know, the show. Like, it, it's fine. So, like, so, as details about the flashback itself is that Mrs. Tromley has uh, brown hair instead of her hair graying out and being gray at the point it is now. And, like, the pastel filter on the flashback and, like, the styles of, like, the pet's outfit, like, Outfits, or maybe just, like, hairstyles, or scale styles, as is the case for Vinny. And it kind of makes me think it's, like, late 80s, early 90s. But, like, if the animals are the same age as Blythe, roughly, then, like, that should put their, like, child form at, at the very, like, most end like maybe 2003 or onward because like if Blythe is 13 in 2012 that just puts her at being born in 1999 so that would name so the pets would have to be the same like roughly the same like I, I'm fine with, like, 98, 97, or even, like, 2000, 2001. Something like that. It's just... Ah, uh, I am spending a lot of time on this, even though it is just this scene. I haven't even really described it in detail yet. So, basically, what happens is Mrs. Twombly walks Russell in, and he's nervous... And Mrs. Tombley also keeps referring to him by, like, the wrong name. Like, just slight variations of Russell, not like Jerome or Tyler. Just like Ruffles or Rufus or something. Stuff like that. So Russell is just nervous about his first day. And, uh, she introduces Russell to all the other pets and refers to him as a rodent. Russell says that he's not a rodent, which is true, but he does not say what he is. So, the order rodent is also called rodentia, but that's not what Russell is. But the order Russell belongs to is, I'm going to butcher this, Eulipotophla. 
Eulipatophila, which translates to truly fat and blind, which is just mean. It's just mean, Latin. This is why romance languages suck. Because <laughs> they're mean. <laughs> but yeah, this is the Eulipotophla. Yeah, that those things. Like, e even if they are portly and don't see well, you don't have to, like, be so blunt about it. Although maybe there's just something about Latin that I'm not understanding. Because, like, saying truly fat and blind is just a fairly blunt way of saying it. You know? So anyway, Mrs. T leaves and Russell is still nervous. But everyone who is there... Penny is not there, obviously... Uh, admires Russell's rodent features, even though he says he's not a rodent, like his uh, rodent hair or his rodent nails or his large beady eyes. But Russell points out that eyes cannot be large and beady. Pepper says that we're ready for our daily mayhem. Russell is worried because someone could get hurt, but Sunil assures him that nothing bad happens at LPS. So Russell goes for it, but steps on a loose floorboard and is jettisoned into the wall. Everyone crowds around him and asks if Russell is okay, and Russell vows on that dog is my witness. He will never be unsafe again, which he has broken in the course of the show several times, sometimes... Like, on accident, sometimes on purpose, and sometimes on purpose where he doesn't want to take the blame. So anyway, the theme song then happens, and then we get to present day. And outside of Little's pet shop, an ice cream truck passes by while a little girl and her dad are walking, and she wants some uh, ice cream and chases after it, letting her balloon go. Now, I, I do just want to point this out quick i don't know if i've said this before but like that particular little girl like appears in the background every so often and like i know it's just because they have like a limited amount of background characters but this girl also appears in the background at blythe's old neighborhood so my running theory is that uh, like, she's keeping tabs on Blythe for the kids next door. Because, like, Blythe left the kids next door and then moved immediately, which is kind of on. But, as luck would have it for the candy, well, maybe not so much luck for this. It's, as something would have it. Like, this particular little girl's parents are divorced, and her dad lives in a uh, downtown city. So, when she visits, she also, like, keeps tabs on Blythe. That's my theory. Or headcanon. We're already rolling with it. But anyway... In the pet shop proper, Russell is investigating the play area, and he goes over to Minka, who has finished her latest masterpiece. But according to her, it isn't late, it's right on time. <laughs> which, which is just lovely. So without remarking on the painting, uh, Russell chastises her for her paint buckets being willy-nilly, but Minka laughs at the word willy-nilly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a fun word. So then Russell hears Pepper going through her joke box, which should be still somewhat organized because, you know, uh, Proud as a Peacock was only like two episodes ago, but whatever. We don't know how time flows in this universe quite yet. This could be like a few weeks from then. Well, more so than the two weeks. I don't know, it's, like, 
Am I am I chasing something that I shouldn't be chasing with this timeline thing? Cause like I don't know. Like I, I wanna But at the same time I realize that it's not necessarily needed. It's just fun. But I don't know. It's peculiar. Is what I'll say. So. Russell points out the dangers of like Pepper. Like throwing her stuff everywhere. While Pepper finds something funnier than a rubber chicken. Which is a real chicken. That just kind of leaves. So then Sunil presents Russell with a box of mystery. Even he doesn't know what's inside. Uh. Russell. Uh. Then points out that, like, the box might be mysterious, but those edges are way too pointy. He then, Russell then walks onto the same floorboard that he did all those years ago and crashes, and he says, I really should fix that floorboard. Hmm. Like, that... D- I, I, okay, again, I know this is a thing just for this episode, but, like, th- this feels like this should have came up earlier. Or maybe it just loosens every so often. Or something. I don't, I don't know. Stuff's weird. Okay. And we, we haven't even gotten to the meat of the episode yet. We're just, like, sitting around and, you know, talking about stuff that may or may not matter. Like, there's just so much. And this episode actually goes through a lot of stuff. So... (laughs) After that, Blythe brings in a new camper who is only here for the day. He introduces himself as Harold Winston, family Skiridae, which just means squirrel, order Rodentianata. Russell corrects him to just Rodentia, which also, uh, like, Rodentia just means to gnaw. Which, why do rodents get off on that? Like, hedgehogs have that thing where they're called, like, truly fat and blind. But, like, rodents are just like, no, we gnaw. That's it. Latin is mean. So, Harold identifies Russell as a fellow hog of the hedge variety. And Russell returns the playful exchange with uh, his guess of being a groundhog uh, being right. And it is somewhat interesting that they are both hog creatures, but they are only connected at the class level of, like, Kingdom Phylum class uh, order family genus species I think I got that so they're at the class level which is like the third level down from kingdom phylum so they're both mammals essentially and that and that's where like the evolutionary similarities end so Blythe is called to the front for customer service and before she leaves she says carpe diem And Harold says that he's impressed with Blythe speaking German. Russell corrects him and says that it is a Latin phrase, not German. And speaking of Latin, Russell's family, family, not, well, not relative, like fam, evolutionary family, is Aranasinde, Siende. Erin Asiende. I'm probably butchering that, but I will say 
Aaron Asiende is also a good pun name for someone who really likes hedgehogs. Just like, that's fun. Anyway, everyone else gathers around to take note of his actual rodent features, like the same features that they took note of Russell all those years ago. And Harold says that groundhogs are the most popular of rodents. Russell says that rats are more popular, but no one listens to him and everyone crowns around Harold. And Russell is getting ticked. So later, Zoe is performing Dance Like You Know You Can, and when she's done, Harold shouts, Timber! Russell panics and then asks what that was about and says, I thought a tree was falling down. Harold says that when you appreciate a singer's Timbre, he says timbre, you shout timber at the end. And Russell asks, so when a logger cuts down a tree, the trees are just taking a bow? <laughs> which, is, which is funny. <laughs> but everyone else says timber, and Russell is just gobsmacked. So Harold is then doing a dance of some kind, but he is actually teaching Vinny to do an underwater elephant step, and Vinny does it. Russell is shocked and says that that is not a real dance move. Harold assures him that it is. Technically, anything can be a dance move if you incorporate it into a dance. Well, or you can invent new dance moves. So, you could do that. That could be an invention of Harold's. So then Sunil asks why Russell has to be rude to Harold. And uh, Harold says he probably means no offense, no matter how misguided he is. Russell takes offense to that and points out that he thought tree frogs were made of wood. He being Harold in this case. Ugh. As much as I am booing on Latin, English... Uh, might also need to work on being clearer, but as language evolves, it only gets more complicated. <laughs> so, uh, Russell then steps on the floorboard again and flies into the chair this time and gets a spring stuck around him, and then when he pops out, he makes accordion noise, <laughs> which, which is just funny. <laughs> like, see, I, I don't mind, like, stuff for the sake of the cartoon I just kind of wish like like it leaned into that a little more if they were going to do that or at least at appropriate times it's weird it is it is very weird and I don't mean weird like weird episode weird it's just weird weird uh, there are so many types of weird in this series but I love it So, Russell is complaining to B Blythe about Harold, and Blythe is like, you can't be that bad, but Russell says that he is. He is a know-it-all who knows nothing, and Blythe is like, so he's a know-nothing, and Russell is like, exactly, and know-nothings are the worst. I can cite the sources, but Blythe politely declines. Russell wishes this day to be over, but Blythe says that he shouldn't do that, because once a day is over, you can't get it back. Dang, Blythe. Drop in truth bombs. Like that. Russell says he likes that for this day and heads back into the play area. Where Harold is getting his portrait done by Minka. And he tells everyone that before wooden easels, artists used weasels to hold up their canvas. And then he tells Sunil that the earliest known magic trick is pulling a hat out of a rabbit. So Neil says it's fascinating, but then asks what kind of hat. Harold then tells Penny Ling that the best bamboo grows in Indiana, and Russell then snaps and says, India! The best bamboo grows in India! And Pepper says, if you don't have anything nice to say, just, like, get out, or don't say anything. Uh, like, I mean, 
Like, I mean, I I get the sentiment here. <laughs> like, Ru Russell could be a little more constructive, but no one's listening <laughs> to him. I guess they're so used to Russell, and that they just like someone who's a bit more charismatic. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a whole thing. But then Blythe tells Harold that his owners are here. Russell then rushes to get Harold out, and Harold says goodbye to everyone and says that he wishes that he could repeat this day. But Russell pushes him out, saying, that, Oh, too bad you can't. I uh, love your unique brand of facts, and don't forget to not write. Everyone else seems to miss Harold, but Russell is glad to be rid of him. He then steps on the floorboard once again. However, when the night turns to day, the same scene of the ice cream truck passing by and the girl letting go of her balloon because she wants some ice cream happens again. And then Russell is ready for a Harold free day, but Blythe introduces Harold the same way she introduced him yesterday. And Russell is shocked. That's right. It's Groundhog Day, baby. And his name is Harold, which is a nice touch. I really like that. <laughs> so, Russell is confused and confronts Harold about his reappearance. The rest of the pets apologize for his abrasive behavior, and Harold brushes it off, saying that lesser hogs have tempers like that, and Russell gets very steamed. Zoe performs again, and Russell says that we've done this before, and reiterates the whole timber, timbre thing. But they do it anyway. And later, Harold is teaching Vinny the underwater elephant step, and Russell barges in on that as well, saying, like, yeah, we've been over this. And Harold says, so you're familiar with Eastern Dance, which was not established the previous day. So, if it's not an original dance step, but something that, like, I mean, I guess the point is that Harold's facts are all wrong, but Russell is also being a very stick-in-the-mud type of person. But he could have just invented the underwater elephant step. That's fine. Russell asks if this is a big, elaborate joke that they're playing on Russell. Penny gets very mad with him and asks him why he's being rude. Uh, Sunil takes him away a little bit and says it might be something in his water dish. Russell realizes that this is not a joke and wonders what's going on before stepping on the board once again. And the joke of stepping on the floorboard is about as Groundhog Day as this episode is because this is the first time it has happened on not the original day and it's already kind of worn its welcome a little bit because it has happened a lot. So Russell is later telling Blythe that Harold and him met yesterday and that yesterday is repeating Blythe is confused about the premise, but Russell explains it more. And Blythe says, so this is some kind of time travel? Sounds crazy. And Russell replies, she said to the hedgehog. And Blythe says, touche. Like, Blythe says that maybe Russell thinks he met Harold yesterday. Russell knows it sounds crazy, but he knows what he knows like this is happening again like and he says that Harold may be to blame for the repeating day so the question is is he so in Groundhog Day proper there is no known cause outside of Phil's inherent grumpiness but in this episode, Harold says he would like to repeat the day. And he kind of is. But he doesn't get the benefits of repeating the day. Russell is. 
Or at least like, yeah, no, you know what I mean when I say benefits. And Russell is grumpy as he tells Blythe, but repeating the day isn't a known power of anyone. Uh, I think, I don't know. We, we, we get to it a little later in the notes. I figure it out later. But for now, let's go on the assumption that groundhogs have time magic that interacts with grumpiness. There's one more important factor in this, but for now we go with that. So again, he tells Blythe he had a rotten time yesterday. And Blythe tells him that maybe it's a good time to get to know him better. And Russell would rather wallow in the corner until the day is done. And the day is done. But the same scene plays outside again. And Harold is here again. And Russell is confused as events are repeating, including Russell walking on the board. So he goes to Blythe again later after some of the events repeat. And he complains but saying that this is the second time he relived this day. Blythe says that maybe he's looking at this wrong. Maybe this is his chance to fix everything. Russell appreciates the thought, but takes it literally, and he fixes, like, a screw on the slide, Minka's paints, Pepper's props. He, like, sands the corner of Sunil's mystery box, which... Is the mystery box to blame? No, I have a better equation for that, but... Also, the box isn't open, so why would it, like, do something before it's open? So, anyway, he also takes his time to hammer in the floorboard so that it doesn't fling people. Russell then walks up to the chair and celebrates like Rocky climbing those stairs as Harold is set to leave. And Russell bids Harold arrivederci. But the next day, Russell looks out and it feels like it's a new day. But the same scene plays outside. He asks Vinny if something is new and Vinny says his hair is less spiky. And Russell says that that's what he likes to hear. And what he doesn't like to hear is Blythe introducing Harold, which comes next. Russell snaps and starts yelling about how Harold isn't supposed to be here. How I fixed everything. He shouldn't be here. Nothing matters. And he flies off the handle. Like... Everyone is wondering what's going on, and Blythe wonders if she should call the vet. Russell says, why? You'll just have to call them again tomorrow. And he starts rampaging across the room, destroying everything. Blythe goes to call the vet, while the rest of the pets try to calm him down. Russell picks up an electrical outlet cover and says, stay back. I have an electrical outlet cover, and I'm not afraid to use it as he hides behind a tree thing that they have. Harold confronts Russell, and Russell's like, I'm not playing your games. But Harold says, I play no games. Now let the electrical outlet cover down, and we can talk. Vinny points out that he's gone batty, and then a bat, who is in there, says, was that comment called for... And Vinny apologizes. And again, I get it for the gag. That's not, like, my complaint isn't, why is she here? It's, why are we not focusing on her? She's adorable. I love that little bat. Even though she has one line. She's adorable. She has this, like, hairpin that's in the shape of a strawberry. It's adorable. Like, I'm fine with that being a gag but I love uh, this little bat person that is just there for one line but I mean I get the gag so Russell continues his tirade 
and saying that it doesn't matter what anyone says, or even what I say, because I'll just repeat again tomorrow. Harold then approaches Russell to see what's up. Harold says that he saw this in a hedgehog in Peru. Russell then goes cheery and asks about Peru. Harold says that the hedgehog's name was Carlos. Russell then snaps and says that hedgehogs are native to Europe, Asia, and Africa, and not the Americas. Harold then points out, what about you? And Russell is defeated because, like, he's a hedgehog in the Americas. <laughs> but, like, I mean, they are native to Europe, Asia, and Africa, but they could easily immigrate to downtown city or Peru and there could be a Carlos in Peru that maybe did this as well maybe I don't think I don't think so because Harold has retention of it whereas you know like he wouldn't have retention of it if like how this episode ends is how the thing with Carlos ends <laughs> So, Harold says that it's better to leave the hedgehog alone with his thoughts, and everyone just walks off. Russell sees the loose board and says, what the heck, and jumps on it, which is actually kind of funny. So, the same scene plays outside again with the ice cream truck and the girl, and here is where I found the last piece of the equation. So, the ice cream truck jingle, the do 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 So, this is this episode's equivalent to I've got you, babe. So, the equation is Groundhog plus Grumpy Gus plus music that activates a Groundhog Day effect using chaos magic inherent to a groundhog i guess this is my guess but we have two things for it and also like the time before where russell was looking out and thought it was a new day it very well could because like in groundhog day like the clock doesn't reset until 6 a.m not midnight not 5.59, 6 a.m. when I Got You Babe starts playing. So it could be a new day until the ice cream truck drives by going do 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 And that is the equation I have found. So Russell is frustrated still as the day repeats. But during Zoe's concert, after everyone says Timber, Russell asks to see Zoe's MP3 player for the song she was just singing. Zoe points out that he never had an interest before. Russell says that he never had the time before, but now he does. And days pass by with the ice cream truck being the transition. And, like, like we just see, like, that event in like different transition phases so it really is i figured this out and russell keeps borrowing zoe's mp3 player making up like different stuff like i'm studying music theory or i want to listen to the song and stuff like that so one day uh he does an encore with zoe and like after zoe's done singing russell starts singing and then Zoe gets in on it, and they are impressed, and everyone chants Timber again. Zoe's impressed with Russell, and Russell says that he understands why Zoe loves music, and says that he can feel it. And Zoe says, exactly. So, Russell decides to do the same for everyone else. He learns dancing and dances with Vinny. He does a comedy act with Pepper. He climbs some trees... I guess they have, like, tree installations in there with Minka. Partakes in a magic trick with Sunil. And goes on a date with Penny. I know that last one is just them sitting, eating, and talking. But that sounds like a date to me. 
So I, I guess we're hard confirming this. I guess we are hard confirming this here. Even though it's not brought up. It's... I, I guess this is a hard confirmation or a soft hard confirmation. Either way, something like that. So then Russell is talking to Blythe about all of his experience in this one day. He's talking about how great he's feeling. Blythe is confused, but Russell says he feels good and knows everyone better than before this day started all those days ago. Blythe says, if you feel like you're in a time loop, you should, and then gets cut off by Russell, who says, I know I should get to know Harold better, too. Blythe asks him how he knew that, and he says he's heard it all before. So, just a quick question, though. Why does he not try to get to know Blythe better? I guess it's because Blythe is working. Blythe is always working during Russell's conversations. Like, I don't know. The pets have play time, but Blythe is on the clock. But we we know that that's a bit loose. But whatever. So uh, he gets to know Harold the next day. And Harold gets brought in and Russell kindly introduces himself. Harold compliments Russell, and Russell is thrown off by the compliment, but takes it. He's a bit embarrassed. I gotta tell ya, it, I, I'm not an expert, but that kind of feels like a bit of bi energy, where, like, Harold's like, yo, you're, you're a good-looking specimen, and Russell's like, well, uh, yeah, thanks. Kind of feels like that. Like, based on my outside observations. <laughs> so... Uh, Vinny and Sunil are about to lead Harold around, but Russell stops them. Russell, like, everyone is chastising Russell for, like, yo, what was that for? But Russell explains that he was going to stop Harold from stepping on the loose floorboard, which Russell steps on and gets flung again. Everyone rushes to his aides, and Harold points out that 93% of pet shop accidents are preventable. Russell is amazed because this is accurate. Harold says that he knows a bunch of stuff, but says that he often misspeaks because he has too many factoids bouncing around in his mind. Russell says that he sure knows safety, and together they fix the floorboard and uh, go do that. And later, we see Harold and Russell talking And Harold says that the record for the longest time without an accident in a factory was a smelting factory in Manila, where Russell thinks it was a king crab cannery in Alaska. But Harold seems to be very sure of himself. And I gotta say, they bring up the cannery again. It's weird back and forth between meat or not meat. It's it's something. Harold has to leave again, and Russell says, See you tomorrow. But Blythe says that he's only here for today. Russell's like, We'll see. But then, no familiar outside scene. Russell is confused about Harold's absence in the pet shop. The pets tell him that he was here yesterday, and Russell is relieved that time has passed, but he misses Harold. And later, Russell is talking to Blythe about how he's glad that it's tomorrow, and how he's glad he got to spend all of that time in yesterday learning about everyone, and he says he's turning over a new leaf and becoming more accepting and willing to to look into new interests and uh, trust people a bit more. Blythe says that that is great, and we have a new camper coming in today, Crash Danger Feather. It says that she's been kicked out of 3D camps for being reckless and unsafe, but Blythe hopes that with Russell's new positive outlook, they can be friends. But Russell is just about to break under pressure, 
because he's afraid that maybe what happened yesterday is going to happen today and everything will repeat. But we don't know because that is the end of the episode. So a few things like I like this episode, but it's a very peculiar episode. Like, obviously, like, it takes inspiration from Groundhog Day. And, like, that's fine enough, but, like, Groundhog Day. It's a legit thing that happened in this show. And yet, shrink magic is just too weird or too bizarre for this show. Like... Come on. Come on. I I know that you can't possibly think that. Like, Groundhog Day is, like, one of the, like, weirdest, most fantastical, like, premises for anything. Like, shrink like, shrink magic comes from somewhere. Like, they don't explain anything of why Groundhog Day is happening. I may have cracked a thing, I may have an equation for why, but that's just a guess. Like, they, they have a source for magic. It's weird, like... It's very, very odd. Okay. So... Aside from that, uh, like, I like the episode a lot, because, like, like, Russell's resolved to, like, learn about everyone more than he did. Like, I mean, it's, it's very apparent that, like, that's uh, kind of what they were going for, because, like, at the beginning, Russell wasn't just, like, mad at Harold for being wrong constantly. He was also not focused on, like, Minka's paintings or Pepper's jokes or Sunil's magic. He just wanted to be safe. And, like, as the episode progresses, he learns more and why everyone does the things they do and why they love it. And, like, like Harold plus the music plus Russell's grumpiness towards Harold might have been the um or like the catalyst for like the repeat but we see other things and like the amount of gags this episode has it's it it's fine i like the gags but i might also be looking too deep in them sometimes especially when it comes to this cuz like i have to write everything down and like Sometimes thoughts get away from me and, like, have a life of their own. But uh, I do have one other thing I want to take a note of. So, again, Groundhog Day. So this episode aired, like, over a year after Harold Ramis' death. But... I'm assuming that Harold Ramis dying like might have been the impetus for this for this episode. Like they wanted to send it up but it was a year. So does production take that long? Sometimes it can. I think so. Like, this might give an insight as to how much goes into production. Let's see, where were they? So, yeah, no, they were in, like, mid mid to late season two, like, around the time of Harold Ramis' death, like, in terms of airing. Were they working on season th three? And were they this late into the game on that, too? Like, I don't know. It might be, it might not be. I'm not 100% sure. 
Like, I can understand it, especially because, like, Groundhog Day is such a good movie. I can understand if, like, they just wanted to send up Groundhog Day because it's a good movie, or if they wanted to send up Groundhog Day because they like Harold Ramis, and it's supposed to, you know, be for him. Although I didn't see anything, like, in memoriam to Harold Ramis, although he had nothing to do with the show, and they don't talk directly to the camera about this. It's a whole thing. So that is it for this episode of the Littlest Petcast. Be sure to leave your comments and reviews on Trout Engine, on Apple Podcasts, on the Google Play Store, and wherever else RSS feeds go when they step on a loose floorboard and get flung around. And be sure to tune in for the finale of Season 3. It's the Pet Fest. I can't help but do it like NCS is in the bathroom every time I say it. It's the Pet Fest. It's right there. And that is it. Goodbye.